Okay, in this installment, we are going to be talking a little bit about a case use. Remember that for every noun that you ever see, so for example, if I were to give you, uh, let's go with this one, patrim, a noun will have three characteristics. First and foremost is the king characteristic, the one that's most important. It's case. It also will have a number indicating if it's singular or plural. And then finally, it is going to have the third, a particular gender. Now, how will I know its number? The form. How will I know its gender? The form. But of course, for this word, you don't know because of the form. In that, third declension, masculine and feminine, both would have it. So patrim, we only know is masculine because it's a dad. How do I know the case? The form. The answer is, repeat after me, because of the form. And so, let's talk about cases and why they exist. Cases in Latin tell us the function or the role of a word within the sentence, whereas in English, the function or role is told to us by the word order. Remember in Latin, Word order means diddly, squiddly. So let's just walk through all of the cases and the uses, in other words, why they're in the cases, that we have encountered so far. So first and foremost is nominative case. Did, did some of you say subject? You should have. I say nominative, you say subject. And we all know the subject is the doer of the verb. I'm not going to write very much about that. That should be self-explanatory. Remember that you can also have the nominative as a complement. Meaning that if I were to have something along the lines of this right here, Marcus est, and it would have to use a linking verb, because that's what linking verbs do. Sum esse fui futuris. Here I list out all the presents, but you could have also had the imperfect, eram, eras, erat, eramis, eratis, erant, or the future, ero, eris, erit, erimis, eritis, erunt, or you could even have the perfect, fui, fuisti, fuit, fuimus, fuistis, fuerunt, but regardless, they all do the same thing. And all linking verbs act as equal signs. So that means, since our nominative subject is nominative, our complement, which is the word linked to the subject by the linking verb, also has to be nominative. Now, there are two types. You can have the complement predicate nominative, Marcus est puer, Marcus is a boy, the predicate nominative is a noun in the nominative that is renaming the subject. Or you have the other is the predicate adjective. So complement predicate nominative, to where a noun renaming the subject, complement predicate adjective in which I could say Marcus est litus. And here it is linked to the subject and as a predicate adjective describes the subject. The genitive case. The genitive case, as you can see, has by it really big the letters of. That is because every time you see a word in the genitive case, it is going to indicate one of two particular things. Possession, that you can see it is the dog of my neighbor, that would be translated in the genitive. Or, as also remember, instead of of, I could put a slash here, and you could also express it with a pol or apostrophe s. So it would be the dog, or the neighbor's dog. And to give you an example of that, in Latin, it would be canis, and then take the word for neighbor, which is going to be from the noun, wikinus, wikini. Remember that this is an example of a substantive. It literally, the word wikinus, wikina, wikinum, means neighboring. But if we imply a noun with that adjective, and thus becomes the neighboring masculine thing, we can call it a neighbor. And if it were a feminine, it'd be wiki na, wiki nai, and thus it's a feminine neighbor. But an example of a substantive. And so here it is, we ki ni. So you could say the dog of the neighbor, showing possession, or the neighbor's is, 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 is dog. And you can show possession in that same way. Secondly, you can have the genitive show a part of a whole. By that, I mean that if I were to say that Marcus est unis, Marcus est unis, Marcus is one, 
puerorum. Oh, I've got to rewrite that. Oh, there we go. So let me write the whole thing again. Puerorum. It says Marcus is one of the boys. Boys are not having possession over one or possession over Marcus. Instead, what that genitive is doing is it's describing all of the boys and part of that whole is what's going along with that genitive. So, possession or part of a whole. And by the way, in this recording, there'll be three additional items that you will be able to answer, and they are states this time. And so, I'm going to randomly, at various points in the video, name a particular state, and by taking a small quiz on Canvas, you'll be able to receive credit knowing that I am now assured that you had watched the video. Let's move on to the date of case. Now, as you can see here, every time you find a word in the date of case, and you can over here see the date of forms, I for first declension, O for second declension, and E for third declension, you, of course, are going to have it as a particular usage. And remember, how will I know whether it is dative servo or ablative servo? You look for your ditransitive verbs. And what are your ditransitive verbs? Well, four of them are give, show, speak, or tell. <coughs> Gotta ring the dative bell. And those words require a direct object because you can say the teacher gives the candy to the student. And thus the student becomes the receiver of the direct object. And that's why the dative case is the case to express an indirect object. You also have dative of reference. It is going to express for whom something is applicable or to whom it, something refers. So if I were to say, Nikese est ire ad ofikinam, and I were to say it really irritatedly and angrily, it is necessary to go to the office right now. You will want to know for whom is it necessary to go to the office right now. And we, 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 we recognize these, these troublemakers we have in our class. And so, so you know, let's, let's go with uh, the first period last year. Eustace, terrible troublemaker, sat on the other side of the room over there. And uh, we know all kinds of shenanigans and, and no, wait, that's absolutely incorrect. He made excellent grades, paid attention, and, and, and always participated. Well, that's just not going to work out. Well, let's make it anyway. So let's say that, 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 that he's the one that has to go to the office to receive an award for doing so well in Latin. There it is. I knew that it would figure it out. And so it would be you stole. Which, by the way, he did win an award for the National Vocabulary Exam, taken on the very last day, March 13th, before all of school ended in person forever. And so that is why it is necessary to go to the office. It is necessary for Eustace because he has won that award. Now, there's a couple of more here that we have not talked about at length, but I'm going to go ahead and add it. And that third one is that you can have the dative of possession. So the two cases that can show possession are the genitive case, of, but you can also show possession two or four. And let me give you an example of which. So usually possession, I'll put down usually, with, and by the way, your first state is Texas. Don't mess with it. Texas. Nevertheless, usually with the form of the verb to be. It doesn't always, always, always have to be, but usually it is. And so you say something like, there are, so here it is, sunt, and there are, oh, and we'll take uh, uh, as an example, do I filii. So there are two daughters. Now I'm assuming nobody in my class, Latin 2, has two daughters. But I could easily take when I'm talking, put in the dative case, me, he, and I could tell everybody there are for me two daughters. That's another way of saying I have two daughters, but it shows possession. A fourth use of the dative case is going to be those datives with special verbs. If you were to look at the special verbs, let's see if I can find them really quickly. Hopefully I can. I don't know if I will necessarily be successful, but look at here, I mostly am. So if you scroll down and look at group four principal parts, there we are. And so, I understand all of this is in the way, but just try to ignore it. 
All of these words of group four principal parts, by their very nature, require a dative object. Now, usually, the object of a verb is going to be in the accusative. So, for example, if I were to say amo, I love, and I wanted to say I love my mama, the only kind of mama I can love is an accusative mama. And so it would be ma trim that you can see here, accusative, ma trim. But if I were to take one of these, and let's go with trust, credo. From credo, credere, crediti, creditis. I cannot trust my accusative mama. The only kind of mama I can trust is my dative mama. Ma tree. And so you can see that all of these verbs, apropinquo, falio, nocio, pario, confido, credo, ocurro, parco, servio, prosum, all of them will have a dative object, and that's what it means when it says takes datives. Now, the reason being is because if you think about it, especially concerning verbs like credo, what are you doing when you trust somebody? You are literally, ditransitively, giving trust to them. So within the verb is the ditransitive action of give and the direct object of trust, and then the dative object becomes somewhat like an indirect object. Now, there are three special ones that I need to pay close attention to, and that is that one right there, apropinquo, and that one right there, okuro, and that one right there, prosum. All of them are compounded verbs in that it's sum with a pro suffix or prefix. Kuro, run, I'll get that out of the way so you can see, with oak, which is really the word ov, and here it is propinquo with the prefix odd. Now why is it turned into op? Assimilation. It has become more similar in the sound because if you say ad propinquo, ad propinquo, ad propinquo, are you saying a propinquo? And so, the word propinquo means to be near. That's where we get the English word propinquity. Especially when I was younger, my children would sit in a restaurant booth. Oh, remember those days when you could eat in restaurants without worrying about a pandemic? <laughs> Nevertheless, and my daughter would be sitting right next to me, and she would be climbing all over me as though I am a jungle gem of a father, and I would have to turn to her and say, I do not appreciate the level of propinquity that you are showing at this time. Which means that obviously, you're too near, get away. And so, when you add the odd to it, and it's odd propinquo, it takes a dative. So when you compound a verb, most of the time it will change the fundamental meaning and it will require a dative object. So what are the only kinds of things I can approach? Data things. What are the only things I can meet? Data things. And what are the only things I can support or benefit? Data things. And so in that way, special verb requires data object. Going back to the usage, we are almost done, I suppose. And so as you can see, there is one, two, three, and four. Indirect objects, reference, possession, and special verbs. Now, the next case is that of the accusative case. The accusative case is the second case usually taught by me in Latin. Now I'm going to do this first. Did you say subject? You should have. Accusative is next. Did you say direct object? You should have. And that is because that is overwhelmingly the number one use of the accusative case. So, you have direct objects, and that's the receiver of the action. So, for example, if I take my pumpkin, and I throw the pumpkin, hey, and I'm a terrible throw, didn't want to hit that, but nevertheless, this pumpkin received the action of throwing, it is the accusative direct object. If I kick the pumpkin, hit the pumpkin, all of those require direct objects, and pumpkin receives the action of all of them. Direct object answers who or what after the verb. There are certain prepositions that will require an accusative object. For example, take odd, pair, prope. All of those, when you want to say to, towards, at, or through, or near, and you're like, at what, through what, near what, the object of the preposition, these require their objects to be in the ablative case, or I should say accusative case. There's a whole other set of prepositions that require their objects to be in the ablative case. Remember that only accusative and ablative can be the objects of a preposition. And then there is, of course, exclamation. So if I am hammering something, whack, whack, and I unfortunately miss the nail, hit my thumb, I would yell out, Holy Kim! Ooh, and I should make it as 
Okay? And I'll be honest, I don't know if a thumb is masculine or feminine. Pollux, Pollicus. Oh, Lord. Let's say it is masculine? I have no idea, but I'm not going to look it up. So I'm going to say it's masculine. I apologize, it's feminine. But if I yell out, my thumb, then of course it would be the accusative because when you exclaim, you need the exclamation. Now, the very last of the cases, and by the way, your second state, I'll give you a hint and then I'll tell it later. It is essentially the greatest swing state in the last 50 years of a presidential election in that no president has won the presidential election since probably the beginning of the 20th century without this state. But nevertheless, I'll tell you to you in a moment. The ablative and what is most important, not that you know what all of these are, but that whenever you see an ablative, it's by, with, because of, from, in, on, at. So if you see a word that would be something along the lines of arbore, you can't just say tree, you must say, by, with, because of, from, in, on, at the tree. Or if I were to see in the very first chapter of Eke Romani, nomine, it would be by name. You can't, or, or, or this one as well, aestate. It wasn't just the summertime, you had to say in the summertime. Because the ablative case is going to express something about the action. That's why it is called the adverbial case. In which it might express when the action occurs. When did they live in Baiae? In the summer. It could be the time within which an action occurs. So if I tell my wife I'm on my way home and I'll be there. Tribus. Oris, it's in the ablative, so I have to say in three hours. It might tell you where an action is going to occur. Very often it'll have a preposition. So, where do they find Geta Geta asleep? In Arbore. In the tree. It might be from where? From where did the Cornelians leave eventually? They left a Calpona from the end. It can be accompaniment. If you have an ablative showing accompaniment, you will have the word cum, and that word with it, cum, is going to then obviously tell you with whom the action occurs. So, the Cornelians walked to the inn, cum Euclidae, with the tutor Euclides. It can give you the means by which. And so therefore, how do you come to school? Some might come to school Raida, by means of minivan, or carriage, or others might come to school, ooh, maybe pedibus, what is the means, by foot, others might come to school, ooh, equo, by horse, I don't know who is coming to school this way, but it could be, Nawe, on a ship, by means of a ship, Instrument is really a subcategory of means, and so therefore you could say, with what instrument? It is giving him the ability to beat Geta, for Davos, and remember that was Bakulo. And then finally there was the ablative of manner. Let me see if I can scroll this up a little bit. Oh, let me get rid of that. The ablative of manner is going to be the abstract quality with which an action occurs. So let me get rid of all these things. So it tells you a manner in which one can graduate high school, or I should say college, I should say. And you can graduate, of course, cum laude. Some would graduate magna cum laude. Others would graduate summa cum laude. And it tells you the manner in which they graduated with praise, with great praise, with the highest praise, and I always like to point out at this time how proud I am of my wife. Graduated summa cum laude from the University of Georgia, had a 3.9 something GPA, I think it was 3.93, I could not be more proud of her, now it's not 3.94, 3.94 is a little bit higher, but 3.93, I could not be more proud of that GPA that she had, uh, just absolutely so fantastic. So proud of her. Not 394. Let's be clear about that. 394 is higher. 394 is, 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 is a greater average than 393. But, again, I, I'm just so proud. Graduating summa cum laude. And, of course, I can retell my joke at this time, which is true. That when you study at UGA or anywhere else, you can graduate cum laude. Which means 
You graduate cum laude. Some people study a little bit more and they, they, they can graduate magna cum laude. Some who study the absolute most work so hard they graduate summa cum laude. But of course, most people just graduate thank you laude. Nevertheless, so these are the, of course, uses of the ablative and the ways by which that you will see a word in the ablative knowing to translate it as by, with, because of, from, in, on, at. There are one more that I can add to it that is not on this list, and that is the ablative of cause. And your second state is Ohio. Ohio is our second state, an incredibly important swing state in all presidential elections. But the ablative of cause is when you're probably going to translate the ablative because of, and it is going to tell you the cause as to why something is going to occur. So just a review over your case uses, and really quickly I'll add to this video some practice on looking at noun adjective agreement. All right, so for a little bit of practice, I'm only going to do the first one here because the other ones you are going to do on Canvas. And what we are doing here is that we are looking at these adjectives that you can see. Fortis, fortis, forte, third declension adjective of double termination. Magnus um, first and second declension adjective, in, in games, in gangs. Third declension adjective, single termination, because it's in games, in games, in games, in games, in games, in games. Bonus um, a first and second declension adjective, and brevis, brevis, breve. Third declension adjective of double termination. And what you have to do here is that you are going to find from all the possibilities of fortes all the words that fortes could modify. Now, when we look at fortes, Fortes could be four things. Now, how did I come up with that when I look over here? Remember, all third declension adjectives are I stems. And I go down to here and I count fortes, fortes. Now, wait, why did I say it twice? Remember, masculine and feminine. And then again, fortes, fortes. So what are the four things the fortes could be? Masculine, plural, nominative. Nominative, plural, feminine. Accusative, plural, masculine. And accusative, plural, feminine. And so when I look at my sentence, I'm looking for any one of those. That's nominative singular, that's genitive singular, that is, whoa, if I got a nominative singular and that's got a US, what's going on there? It must be that it is a neuter word. Onus, oneris, oneri, onus. It is probably accusative. Saying is servus must be my nominative subject. So the slave carries a load on a journey through the streets of the genitive singular city. So which is the word? We ask. Why? Because that can be those four things. That I know for a fact is accusative plural and that is accusative plural, both feminine. Now, inevitably, for the second one, forte, people would automatically draw a beeline from forte to itinere. Do not do it. You are tricked into that because you think Oh, look, they've got the same ending A. They must be going together. No, wrong. Itinerary, if I point at it over here, is that itinerary right there. Iter, itineris, itinerary, iter, itinerary. Whereas, remember, fortis, fortis, forte, if it were itinerary, it would have to be modified by forti. So when it is forte, it's either going to be nominative singular forte or accusative singular forte. So, nominative singular, Sarah is nominative singular, but nominative singular neuter. So it ain't modifying that. So what is it modifying? Onus. As I pointed out, onus is our direct object, accusative. That is that form there. So if I see if I would drag it across, do you see how I hit forte? The same case, the same number, the same gender. The next one is magna. Magna is either genitive singular feminine, dative singular feminine, or nominative singular plural. So I'm looking for any of those, and I am not, that's no, 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 and up oh, there it is. It's a big city. So through the streets of the big city. Fortis with a short is. How many things could that be? Well, I look. Let's count. One, two, both fake endings. Three, four. And for the neuter, five. It could be five things. What are they? Nominative singular masculine, nominative singular feminine, genitive singular masculine, genitive singular feminine, and genitive singular neuter. So, fortis actually 
can modify Serwus, but it can also modify Urbis. How can it modify Serwus? That can be nominative singular, that can be nominative singular. That is genitive singular, and that can be genitive singular. All three of the genders, so it doesn't even matter what the gender that is, but we see from back nine, Urbis is feminine. I'm going to change colors for no other reason than to not confuse the lines for the last four. And so, Magno. Magno, when I look, how many things could it be? One, two, three, four. Dative singular masculine, dative singular neuter. Ablative singular masculine, ablative singular neuter. So I need to find something dative or ablative singular. And indeed, sweep around, ablative singular, ablative singular. Fourteen. How many things could it be? I go and look. And oh my lord, let's do some counting. Remember, I stem only. One, two, dative, dative, masculine, feminine. Three, four, ablative, ablative, masculine, feminine, because all third clinching adjectives are I stems. And so instead of an E in the ablative, it has a long I. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I count two over here because masculine and feminine. I count one over here because it is only neuter. So six possibilities, but dative singular or ablative singular. And so I'm looking for dative or ablative singular and also with itinere because it is ablative singular. Magnum, how many things? Three. Accusative singular masculine. Nominative singular neuter and accusative. Singular neuter. So I'm looking for something accusative singular, either masculine or neuter, or nominative singular neuter. The slave is not neuter, so not nominative, nominative singular, but what is accusative? Onus is accusative. And so, as you see, again, these lines very often do not share the same ending, but they will share the same case, the same number, the same gender. Then finally, the last one, Magnus, is the easiest. We'll sweep around all the way to Servus that you see there. So really quickly, Fortes, we asked, not the same ending. Why? First declension noun, modified third declension ending. Why not the same form? They're both neuter variants in the accusative. Same form? Nope. Why? Third declension noun by a first and second declension adjective. Same? Yep. Why the same? Third declension noun, third declension adjective. Sweeping around, why not the same? Second declension noun by third declension adjective, and so forth and so on. Your last state is the green mountain state. Ver, or where in Latin, is green. Mont is mountain, and so therefore the green mountain state, Vermont. Now, I'm going to be putting the rest of this on canvas for you to practice. And best of luck, this one already done for you, appreciate you watching, and that does it for our first week of review of nouns and adjectives, and I appreciate all your work.